can you just, well, first of all, just, just talk about the day. Obviously, it was a kind of up and down, and we were just wondering, too, about putting. Just gener in general, it seems like guys were struggling to get the speed right today. Um, yeah, I, for me, it wasn't as much the speed. You got some differences, and some greens are green, and some are really brown now. Like, I went from the 7th to the and the ninth are just a totally different surface. One of them is, is super green and kind of grabs the ball. And then the ninth is like, watch out, it's glass. Um, so you got, you know, as they're trying to firm some spots up, it makes sense on those holes though, because on seven, if it was glass, you couldn't, no one, it wouldn't be fair. But the ninth, if it was green, it would be too easy. So I think they've done a great job of where that is. Um, like the 17th is super green behind it, but if it was brown, it would be unplayable. Um, so it's, uh, I think overall, um, I struggled a little, I, I got, I missed, um, uh, I hit it close on seven and missed an eagle putt there. Um, there's a long wait in between my drive and the putt and I, I just hate that. Like, I mean, it was cause we were waiting on different groups and such. And, um, it was probably 25, 30 minutes from when I teed off to when I had my putt and I just overthought it and missed it. And I got a little off myself. But that wasn't green speed. I'm, my speed control is better today. What's difficult about it is that a lot of the pin locations are just in these tiny little tucked corners where if you hit it more than five feet by, it goes 50 feet away. So guys are leaving them way short, not for the same reason they were leaving them short last week. It's because you almost have to. If you're more than 30 feet away, it's difficult to judge a bit with the wind. And, and you can't be, you got a lot of ridge riders where if you hit it too firm, you know, it takes that knob but they're not fast enough to be able to ride onto the fall line and get to the hole. So it, it gets challenging if you don't hit it on the flat spots of the greens. Jordan, Does that answer that? I'm, that was a lot. Did you have a follow? No, go ahead, please. Another five minute answer. No, no. Um, <laughs> you can't say I've watched every single swing you've made today, but it seems like you've at times gone away from um, kind of a rehearsal. Have yeah, I haven't. Have I've maybe done it on like two swings this week, yeah. I didn't do it much last week. Maybe one of the rounds I did it and the others I didn't. Uh, trying to go away from it, but um, I haven't really swung the club very well this week at all. Um, but it's even my rehearsals I'm doing behind the ball are not quite hitting the spots I want to, and that, that happens. I mean, I go through two steps forward, one step back kind of thing, and um, just from round one, it just hasn't really been on. But I don't think that doing a rehearsal over the ball would help. I'm trying to just. No, it's more just. Um, it's more like I find myself doing a better job of being shot focused if I'm not doing the rehearsal versus swing focus of the rehearsal. Having said that, I won with doing the rehearsal every swing. So it can be done. It's just more, I'd rather, I'd rather not and be able to just kind of be reactive. Um, and, but I, I, here and there, I think I'll go back to different versions of it. Just this week, I just, I haven't been because I wanted to, to really stay as outwardly focused as I could. How's your grace worked out this week? Good? How's my what? Your grace. Um, I'm not, not sure what it means even, but. Yeah, not um, really poorly in round one. Um, probably cost me a couple shots, just not having the patience. And um, at the old course, you can't, regard unless it's going to be Armageddon out here, you just can't shoot one under. Uh, it's, you're just giving too much to the field. Um, mm -hmm. The lowest round you can shoot is really three under, unless you're going to throw a couple eights at them. But, um, you know, you just kind of got to be in that four to five range each day uh, and shooting one under and I just wasn't patient enough round one. A little frustrated maybe with knowing that I was that I was trying to force my way through a, maybe the bad end of a draw. I think our wave kind of got hit a little harder the first day and then, you know, um, uh, and the second day it was pretty equal. So I, I just, you knew going in like at the open, if you find yourself really any term, especially the open, you find yourself where you, you're going to be maybe a shot or two on on kind of the the bad end, you know, I, I just feel like I tried to force a little bit the first round and and didn't give myself grace, um, and it bit me. And from there, I've just been trying to climb back. Can you talk about tomorrow? I mean, obviously you're a bit back. Yeah. Right now it's 15. You're. Yeah. Um, this is a course that you can light it up, but yet you gotta. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, I don't think with the conditions. Um, I mean, I I'm trying to shoot. You know, I'm trying to, each day I'm trying to get five or six by the 18th tee. Um, you can get those all in the first seven or eight holes, eight, nine, ten holes. I mean, you can be seven under through ten. It's relatively common in these opens, um, but not by forcing it or trying to get there. It just comes passively. So, I mean, with where the pin positions are, if they continue, I mean, these are gnarly, right, because we don't have crazy tough, they're very 
benign conditions for Scotland. So it's just so hard to, it's not hard to not, to not make bogey. It's just hard to, to make birdie um, as often as you want to. But um, I guess for tomorrow, it's, you know, I have no reason to try and backdoor a top 10. For me, it's fire at it and try and shoot a really low round. And if I don't execute, I don't execute. But no scared swings tomorrow. That's really my goal. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, this is 8 out of 10. And um, so I'll probably do an ice bath tonight, which ice baths are a lot harder in Scotland than they are in Memphis. Do <laughs> um, <laughs> you do a lot of ice baths? Uh, I like to do cold therapy whenever I can. I think it's the most beneficial cool, thing I've cool found. Cold therapy sounds better, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if there's cold plunges, but it's ice bath over here. What does that do for you? Uh, I feel like I get fresh legs the next day. Um, I try and do, you know, fit, get physio work on and then do that. And, like, if I don't do it versus do it, I do that and Norma Tech boots, you know, those compression pants that people wear. So I, I do those every night on the road and, and ice bath. And if I don't do them, I actually feel my, like my legs are fatigued the next morning. And when I do, I, I don't notice it. But if you, if you were playing 8 out of 10, would you be doing ice baths? Um... It would really just depend on it would depend on how many to be honest like um i can tell if i'm a little down or not um starting the week with energy it just helps kind of get that energy and it also helps me sleep better too where do you get the ice guy? huh where do you get the ice i'm at um the rusix and um <laughs> and the uh and ice is ice is hard to get into a coca-cola over here so I'm very lucky that they have access to a big ice machine and they bring bags of ice. Justin's doing it over there too. And so we've kind of, um, we've gotten lucky that, that they fucked us up there. Yeah, thank you. This is an unusual Just to interview. Just quick one. Um, someone out there's gonna sleep on the 54 hole lead. You've obviously done that. How do you remember sleeping that night and, and what do you do when you're sleeping on a uh, Which time? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been fortunate to have quite a number of them and it's always a little uneasy if you can take your mind off of it as you're going to bed, watch a show or a movie or, you know, stay off your phone. Um, as long as you get to sleep, it's not really an issue. It's if you, you know, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you start thinking versus just getting back. It, it can kind of keep you up a bit. But I mean, the teen off at four in the afternoon. So even if you don't sleep well, you got time from eight to noon if you need to, to go back to sleep. So um, it's more so over here. It's more so. Uh, the fact that you tee off so late. It's almost frustrating um, that the tee times are so late over here. Um, I, I think that uh, I understand why, obviously, for television back in the States, but um, as a player, it's it's a bit unfortunate when you've done that work and then you just sit around pretty much the whole day. Um, it's a little more challenging sleeping on it, but it's nice when you're kind of coming from behind because you know it's that much harder to just the anticipation leading up. So. This isn't exactly the hardest first tee shot, so that's normally kind of where you start getting the nerves out of the way. Um, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal, especially if you look at the names at the top of the list. I don't think anyone's going to have a tough time sleeping, and that's why I think being at eight under, um, I would need to finish my round and have some kind of a crazy monsoon tomorrow, I think, to have a chance. <laughs> even shooting, even if I were to shoot eight, I don't think, I, I still, still think I lose by more than three. <laughs> so um, I'm in a position where shooting seven, eight under, would have a really strong finish and I would gain a lot of momentum. So um, there will be no give up. Um, it's not like I'm in 45th, you know what I mean? Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Thanks very much. Jordan. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Jordan.